Welcome to a new episode of my USB tutorials. In today's video I will show you how to implement the USB in endpoint type box transfer on this AppMega 32U4 microcontroller. My overall goal is to turn this microcontroller into a USB GPIO expander. I have already implemented the logic for setting GPIOs with a um, USB out endpoint type box transfer and now for reading in the states of GPIOs I will implement this USB in endpoint and I will also use a bulk transfer for this. So here on my PC I've already prepared a little bit. So if we go into the microcontroller firmware folder of my USB tutorials folder you can see I have a new folder here called free bulk in endpoint. So let me see the into it. And here I have already prepared a little bit. So here in lib we have all the files for our USB library I'm using here. And here in main.c we have a main function. So let's take a brief look at it. Okay. So here we have the GPIO pins which I want to control over this USB device. And down here is the logic for... Um, yeah for setting a new output data register value or changing the pin direction and every um, 100 microseconds I will or every 10 milliseconds sorry every 10 milliseconds I will jump into this if branch here and here I'm reading in the status of the GPIOs and I will write them into an endpoint 2 buffer and this buffer I want to be able to transfer over USB. Okay, so what do we have to do for, for achieving this? So here in my libraries folder I have the C file of my USB library and a header file for it. So let's start making some changes in the header file. Okay. So here we have some defines we need for M.1 and what I will do now is I will just copy these defines and paste them in here and do the same thing for M.2. Okay, so type bulk is okay. The direction should now be in, not out. The size of our endpoint will be 8 bytes and I will only use one bank. So this looks good here. And this is the bank in, or the bank size in human readable, or the um, endpoint size in a human readable form, which is 8 bytes. Okay, and now we have two endpoints beside of endpoint 0, which all, always has to be implemented on a USB device. So status code 0 is not so important, but something which is important here, I need some global variables for my endpoint and I will declare them as external variables here in my header file. So let me change this to endpoint2 buffer and endpoint2 flag. So the flag will be set when there is new data to send out and this uh, in this buffer we can pass in the data which should be sent over USB. And then I will need a new function here which I will call USB endpoint2 in. This is yeah the function which will be called when we have or when we want to transfer data over the USB M.2. Okay, cool. So now let me go into the source file and we have to make some changes here. So first thing we have to declare the global variables. So let me copy these two here and let's add a new one tile M.2 buffer and M.2 flag. So here these are the variables for communicating with the main function. Then this function here is the um, communication interrupt service routine. So whenever a USB package arrives, this function will be called. And here we are checking for which endpoint the function or the pa package has arrived. And then depending on the target, we are selecting the endpoint. So if in the register, um, in the USB interrupt register, we have a one in it, then the um, endpoint um, the package is for is m.0, if it's a 2 it's m.1 and here I will add a new um, case here, so in case it's 4 we have a new package for m.2 
and I will set the endpoint multiplexer here to 2 and I will call the function USB endpoint 2 in and this function of course I will have to implement later and then I can do the break here. Okay cool. So what's next? And here we have an init function and all I will do here in this init function is I will initialize here I will initialize the m.2 buffer with zeros 2 and as the length is 8 bytes as well this for loop is okay and I will also set the m.2 flag to 0 here and that's it for the init function. So let's go down a little bit. So here we are in the USB M.0 setup function and in here we have the USB descriptors. And what I have to do now is I have to add a new endpoint descriptor. So, so here we have the endpoint descriptor for endpoint 1 and I will need one for endpoint 2 as well. So let me just copy these seven lines here and paste them in here. So we have here a descriptor for endpoint 2. The length is 7 bytes again. It's an endpoint descriptor. The um, endpoint number should be 2. And um, the last, um, so bit 7 indicates the direction. As we are having an in endpoint, I have to set this to 1. So I get 82 hexadecimal here. Okay, the attributes are the transfer type, which is bulk transfer, which is okay. And yeah, here I will I will use the size of M.2 here, and that's it for the um, disc endpoint descriptor. Okay, so let me go down a little bit. So here we have some request types, and if we have the request um, nine, which is head configuration, we have to initialize the endpoint. So up here we are disabling all endpoints and freeing the memory if it's allocated. And then I will use the USB init endpoint function and I will initialize endpoint 2 here. So this will allocate uh, memory for um, endpoint 2 in our um, SRAM buffer for the USB communication. And something I forgot, I also have to enable a new interrupt. So here in the um, interrupt register, enable register of my USB IP, I have to enable the um, NUC interrupt enable. So this interrupt um, will be triggered whenever there is an in request for M.2 in this case. Okay. Good, so that should be it. And now all which is left to do for us is we have to implement the USB M.2 in function here. Okay, so I will need an iteration variable. And the first thing I will do is I will check if um, there is a new package for um, a new in request for this endpoint. And the way I'm doing this is I will ask if the neck interrupt is set and if so there is a new package available so I will do um, a handshake by clearing the interrupt bit this will trigger a handshake and then I will check if the um, buffer the FIFO is empty so I can place in the data which should be sent to from the USB device to the host PC so I will ask if um, the interrupt register and one shifted by txini is set. Because if so, once again I will um, clear this interrupt here. And then I will check if the m.2 flag is set to 1 to check if there is data out there which needs to be transferred and if so I will place the data into the um, sending FIFO for my USB endpoint. So what I will do here is I will write um, endpoint2 buff 
i into the USB data x register, which is the FIFO of my USB IP. Okay? And even if there is no data, I will um, clear um, the FIFO con bit and this will free the FIFO. Mm -hmm. So um, is FIFO empty, clear flag, I'm just adding some comments, is there a USB in request Acknowledge it. Okay, so here we have some comments. So I think now it's a little bit easier to read. Okay, and last but not least, um, I have to set the M.2 flag to zero again. Okay, and that should be it. Let me try to compile this program and let's see how much mistakes I've made. So I have a make file for building it. Okay, so the first error is already here. Just a typo. Okay, let's see how much more mistakes I've made. Okay, now it's looking good. So let me try to flash this program to um, my Epic microcontroller by using um, the A4R dude and my USB ASB programmer here. So the target is Epic uh, 32 U4 microcontroller, and I want to write to the flash and I want to write USB hello.alf is name. So let's do this. Okay, it's looking good. And now I will execute a last USB to check my USB devices. Here I have my at metal test device. So let's see some more details and what we can see here now is we have a new endpoint, endpoint 2 in. So it's a bulk transfer type endpoint direction in it. It has eight bytes in size. Okay, cool. So I guess that's it for today. In my next video, I will access this endpoint. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.